Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I am so excited because I'm gonna be doing a palette bingo with my newest palette edition. This is the ABH Norvina collection. This is the volume one palette and it's a massive 25 pan palette. So I bought this online and I honestly did not expect it to be this large, like at all, but I'm really impressed by it. I am so excited to delve into this palette. I have not yet worn any of these shades on my eyes. I swatched a handful of the colors last night just because I was just way too excited when this came in the mail. But otherwise, I yeah, I haven't touched it at all and I just feel like the pal a palette bingo would be the perfect way to play with this for the first time because look at the vastness of the shade selections. Like I, I don't even know where to begin. It would feel like a disservice to choose only a handful of shades and to not play with all of them. But of course I can't do that all at once. So today I'm gonna be randomly drawing five shades from this and creating a look around those five shades. I'm going to use the Pretty Random app to generate five shades to play with from this palette. So the first one is going to be number eight. So shade number eight is B3 in the palette and it's this gorgeous pink shimmer shade. The next shade will be number three. So shade number three is this bottom shade right here and it is A3 in the palette which is kind of a slightly fuchsia dusty purple kind of tone. The next shade will be number 12. The third shade I will be using is this one right here which is number C2 and it is just a metallic gold shade. The fourth shade is going to be number 23. So this shade on the bottom right here is E3 in the palette and that is number 23. It's like a mustard ochre kind of shade and I think that it kind of throws off the color scheme, however it matches with the metallic gold. So um, curious to see what I'm gonna do with that shade actually. <laughs> and the final shade is going to be number two. Shade number two is this one right here which is called A2 and it's just a vibrant matte purple. So I just went off camera to prime my eyes. I used my Cover FX cream concealer and then I set it down with my Kat Von D Lock It Powder Foundation. These are both products that I'm trying to use up so I've just been using those every single day. And I thought while I prime my eyes, I would kind of reflect and try to figure out what I want to do for my look today. I still, I'm feeling very vague about what I wanna do with this color story, but I am really excited to play with it. So I'm hopping into E3, that mustardy shade right there, and I'm going to pop that into my crease. I was expecting this to go on so much more sheer, but it is such a nice, color. I think this is going to get a lot of wear from me over the fall this year. Um, on this side, for some reason, I'm bringing up very high. So I really like the way that that looks as a transition shade, but now I'm going to just totally throw it off and I'm going to go in with A2, which is the last color that I selected. I'm going in with a little bit more of a tapered blending brush. And I'm just going to pop that on the outer corner. So I've just been slowly packing that second shade onto the outer portion, like onto the outer corner, not really bringing it up into the crease, but also struggling with trying to make this symmetrical because my eyes are nowhere near symmetrical. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've just been packing that on there and I want to do a halo eye with these colors So I am going to use the exact same shade and pack it onto the inner portion, but my eyes don't They don't tend to do well with a halo eye kind of look, but I'm gonna try it anyway So let's find a very precise brush I'm gonna use this little accent brush from Real Techniques. I believe it's called accent. Yes, and again, I'm just gonna go into A2, which is that purple shade, and I'm just gonna pack that into this inner portion of my lid. I feel like that outer corner is not as intense as the other one. I'm gonna pack that on. 
So it definitely is like starting to close off my eyes a little bit. Also, why is this eye just so lazy? It, there's nothing happening there. Okay, I'm gonna try to pull that up a bit. Is that better? I don't know. So now that I have color on both the outer portion on an, and on the inner portion, I'm gonna go in to create the halo. And I think I'm gonna use this actually um, for the halo. So I'm gonna use the golden shade, which is C2. And I'm just gonna go in with my ring finger and just pack that into the center of the lid. Oh my God. It looks a lot more flaky um, applied with my finger than it did in the swatch that I did with my finger. So just because I'm feeling like that transition from purple to gold, there is no transition. It's so stark. I'm going to go into the second shade right here, which is A3, and I'm going to use the exact same brush that I did the purple on, and I'm just going to try to like meld those shades together. I just decided to go in and clean up the fallout and when I was doing that I realized how the shadow was really staying too far down for my eye shape. I really needed to bring it up to kind of round out my eyes a little bit more. So I just went in and I just um, pulled that shadow up higher but now that I have it higher on this side I feel like this inner portion of the crease needs to go higher but I don't want to bring the purple in there because again that will just close off my eyes again. So what I'm gonna do is use a very small tapered brush and go in with the mustard actually. And I'm going to stare like forward into the mirror this time because I've been all this time looking downward into a mirror and I feel like that has been, that's why my eyes kind of got elongated and went very far down versus like pulled upwards. So I'm gonna just look into a mirror straight on for this part. So of course I've been like touching my eyes and playing with all of the shadows so using a lot of brushes and all that kind of stuff. So I do feel like the gold is kind of fading away a little bit. It seems to have just dissipated. So I'm going to use my e.l.f. glitter glue and I'm going to try to intensify that. So I'm just using a, the tiniest little bit on my finger and I'm just going to put that onto the central portion of my lid. And then with my middle finger instead, I'm just going to tap on top of that and just re-intensify that. Oh my gosh, it makes it look so much more like foiled. You see that? Holy heck, that's insane. So I'm gonna go off camera and do my base and brows and kind of see from there how I want to tackle the remainder of this look. The only other shade that I haven't yet used is the metallic pinky shade, which is B3. But other than that, I've used every shade so far and I don't know how I feel about it yet. <laughs> so once I have my base on, I might feel a lot more confident about it. So I'll be right back with that all completed. So my base is pretty much done minus all of this extra bake that I have underneath of my eyes because I really want to catch any fallout or any potential fallout while I finish up the lid as well as the lower lash line. So we're going to move quickly because I'm nervous I'm going to actually like completely dry out my under eyes. So I'm going to go in Ah, I still don't know how I'm going to incorporate B3 into this. I think what I want to do is I just want to meld it on the edges of the gold. So you know what? We're just going to do that. Um, I'm going to use the same little accent brush that I used for the inner corner. And I'm going to go in with B3, which was that like metallic pinky shade. And then I am actually just going to spray it with my Smashbox primer water. I do this very, very frequently, especially to prevent fall out, but I'm just going to pop it right on the edges of that gold. And really meld it into the purple so it doesn't look so harsh. I just, every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, it just looks so abrupt. I'm just using the brush that had the purple on it. I'm not actually picking up any additional product and I just want to add that into the crease. 
because when I did my brows, I kind of cleaned up the edges around them, and I think I made the crease look a little less blended. So for the lower lash line, I just want to go in with A3, which is that more fuchsia of the purples, a slightly more pinky tone, and I'm just going to pop that all across the entire lower lash line and then see from there what I want to do. I think what I'm going to do with the lower lash line is then just go into the other purple and just use that on the outer corner. I'm going to dust off this bake because this is stressing me out. That bake definitely made my under eyes look very bright, but they do look quite dry. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the primer water on the lower half of my face. Try not to get that on my eyeshadow so it doesn't potentially do anything harmful to it. So I just went off camera and threw on some mascara. I'm just using a mini of the Milk Kush mascara at the moment and I love the way that this makes my lashes look. I know this is not a look for everyone. It's a little bit clumpy, a little bit like undone, but I think it really pulls the look together. It just suits my personal style so much. And then I threw on a little bit of a lip. It's this one right here. This is the ColourPop um, Velvet Blur Luxe Lipstick in the shade Lucky Strike. So this is definitely quite a sheer application. Like I did not sheer it out at all, you can see. It doesn't go on as a full opacity lipstick, which I quite like because it wears very well that way. So I really do like the whole look at the moment, but I feel like I need something on the inner corner. So I'm gonna go right back into the palette and use that shade B3, the sparkly, sparkly pink shade. And I'm just gonna use it on a very small brush and pop that into the inner corner, but then I want to use my highlight on top. So I'm gonna be very, very faint with this, I hope. Very, very minimal, yeah. And then I'm gonna go into this Wet n Wild highlighter. I am currently trying to pan this one. So I want to just tie the look all together. I am wearing this on my cheeks today. And I want to just go in and tie the whole look together with this. So I'm just gonna pop this on top of that. Just to brighten it up. But it still has that deeper pink base that really ties it in with the remainder of the look. So here is the final look. I'm really happy with the way that it all pulled together. I was definitely feeling a little bit, uh, not stressed, but definitely a little bit tense for a little while there, just thinking that I didn't know what I was going to do at all with this color story. However, like it really was a very cohesive color scheme. It's just, I haven't been playing with a lot of eyeshadows as of late. So it was definitely a good challenge to kind of kick me back in gear. And I'm really impressed so far with my first time using the Norvina palette. Of course, I need to play with this much more in order to really formulate my thoughts on this palette. But so far, really, really happy, really, really impressed with the, with the pigmentation and um, just the palette, like as a whole, the quality of the palette feels really nice as well. And I did notice that this palette is fully vegan as well. So that is something that is really nice to note because it's much more inclusive. There's 25 shades in here. They are 1.8 grams of product in each shade as well. So it's just all over. I felt like I couldn't resist this palette because of all of those details, but First impressions, really happy. Cannot wait to play with this palette more. I actually really would like to do another palette bingo with this palette in time. So if you'd like to see something like that, please let me know. But other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed the look that I created and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.